Good morning and welcome to the Microsoft Virtual Academy. And this is a special Virtual Academy jumpstart of the, getting started with PowerShell. The best PowerShell. one. The, and it's going to be the best, the best one, one ever. Of getting started with PowerShell. Whether you're an IT pro or even a dev, this is the strongest, most powerful management tool you have in your arsenal to take control of your network. And we're going to take you through it today, step by step. And when I say we, well, it's a very special training event today. I'm Jason Helmick, but this is the inventor of PowerShell, distinguished engineer Jeffrey Snover. <laughs> Howdy. And this is going to be a great event for, for all of us today. Um, we're going to take you through step by step on how to get started in working with PowerShell and who better to learn it from than Jeffrey Snover. So I'll tell you what, Jeffrey, let's, let's start out with some intro since sure. we're there. I'll flip the little slide thing. And okay. Yeah, so howdy, I'm Jeffrey Snover. Um, I'm a distinguished engineer, and uh, let's see, so I you know, started off the PowerShell team about 12 years ago, maybe a little bit more, um, and uh, that worked out pretty well because after having shipped a couple versions, they made me a distinguished engineer, and then the lead architect for Windows Server 2012. Which is awesome. Th that worked out pretty well, so now I'm the lead architect for Windows Server uh, and System Center Data Center products, so uh, having some fun. Oh boy, having a lot of fun. And with PowerShell and what we're going to talk about, the Windows Management Framework, all of this bundled together, not just in Server 2012, but it works all the way backwards Down to level. 2003 so that we can, we can do all of this management with everything that we have in our environment, not just necessarily the latest and greatest. That's the plan. Back to filling up your arsenal. I like that term. I like that term, too. That, that's turning out pretty good. Arsenal. So oh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Jason Helmick. Uh, I work with Concentrated Technologies. I do this for a living. I love to train. I do PowerShell, and I also work as an engineer and a consultant, uh, mainly doing a lot of automation with it. Uh, author of a new book that's coming out, uh, Learn uh, <laughs> Windows IIS <laughs> in a Month of Lunches. Tough title to say. Uh, and, and it's not only about learning IIS, but it's using PowerShell for it. So. Yeah. Just some uh, interesting little tidbits about me. Truly what the best thing to know about me is, I get to sit next to him so oh, yeah. <laughs> as we do this. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Let's start off with um, showing you what we're going to talk about today. So as you can see from the agenda, we're going to cover several topics today, and it's actually quite a few of them. We're going to start off with one of my favorite ones, which is don't fear the shell. You know, I think a lot of IT guys, when they first get started with this, I hear this all the time, they, they're scared. Yeah. to get started with PowerShell. Yep. They're not used to a command line. They don't want to say they're scared, but they're not used to using a command line. Deep down, they see that console window and they just like, I don't know what oh, to do. Yeah. So one of the first Deer in things, the headlights. Yeah, so one of the first things we're going to want to do is get rid of some of that fear, show you how straightforward you can get started with PowerShell, and then we're going to take you into what PowerShell starts to look like. And of course, we're going to talk about the reasons why PowerShell even exists, and there's some Oh, incredibly important one. So we'll also get into the help system, probably one of the most important things that we do today, the pipeline yeah. and extending the shell. All of this stuff that we're going to do is going to make more sense as we hit it, looking at what objects are and drilling into the pipeline. What is that weird character I keep seeing between these commands? And we'll get into one of the most important advantages that you have, which will be uh, PowerShell remoting, which will let you do a lot of your stuff in scale. That's where it gets fun. That's where it really gets fun. That's By the way, so people should be uh, uh, doing these exercises with us. So, you know, you should be at your computer, fire up a PowerShell yeah. window, and uh, type along with us. Uh, that's the way you get the and, most out of this course. And actually, I think that's the best way to get the most out of this is I, I know you want to kick back and kind of, you know, sip some coffee or whatever and listen to us, but keep your fingers close to that keyboard and that console um, and PowerShell so you can work with us on this. And you should be joining, are you going to tell them about the Q&A? Yeah, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, i got a slide coming up. Oh, okay, here, let's here do the is. expectations things on our, our target audience, and then we'll talk about how to join us. Um, th this was designed for IT pros. However, if you're a dev, uh, please join us on this. This was designed for IT pros to be a quick, deep dive and get started with PowerShell. There are so many guys out there right now and gals that are trying to get started with PowerShell, and sometimes you find it really difficult. Well, this is the idea is to get you through the difficulty. And we're not just doing an introductory level. We're going to go in pretty deep with using PowerShell, and it doesn't matter what product you want to use it with, whether you want to use it with Active Directory or SharePoint you got to know the tool, and if you know the tool, then the products are easy to deal with. So um, if you're an IT pro, if you work in Help Desk, if you're a developer interested in what PowerShell can do for you, this is the place to be. And 
Um, as a couple of additional resources, first of all, we have chat available. If you're all in on chat, you can chat us questions, and I'll constantly be reminding you to chat in questions. We have an amazing support staff out there today. A lot of the PowerShell MVPs are joining us today to help answer questions, and we'll be out there answering questions. So we want you to join in and contribute and ask whatever questions you have, and we'll do the best we can to make sure you all get an answer to it. Yeah, and the PowerShell community is, is blessed with some fantastic MVPs, a uh, number of which are online, and they'll be coming and uh, going throughout the day. So you know, don't hesitate to ask questions. You know, you got some rock stars out there. You certainly do, and I also want to keep in mind that this particular virtual academy, we're going to have a second session, not the same thing. We're going to go beyond this session further and further into scripting and tool making here in just a couple of weeks on August 1st, right? Yeah. Yep. It's going to be on August 1st. So you want to join the MVA community. As a matter of fact, you can join the MVA community. Um, you get signed in online as you uh, go through the uh, videos that are available out there. You get points. And uh, for right now, you can get 50 special MVA points if you put in the uh, code that's at the bottom of the screen. So make sure you, you keep track of what's going on with the MVA community so that you can get more sessions just like this one. Ooh. I don't know. Think we're ready to maybe yeah, get let's started? Go. Let's, let's get into this. My favorite topic. I know. This, I just love talking about this. So, folks, here we go. We're going to get into uh, uh, Don't Fear the Shell. Come on, you can hear the music, right? Don't Be Fear the Don't. Don't oh. fear the shell. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, maybe okay. not. No. Um, okay, we'll stop that then. <laughs> so, look, we're going to go through an overview of what PowerShell is, why it even exists, and of course, this is the great time for Jeffrey to, to, to help us out understand why we even have this. And then we're going to start going into how to take some of the fear out of uh, running PowerShell. We'll show you how to get it installed and how to get it set up. So, let's rock and roll. First of all, the purpose of and I just want to point out. Can you see this slide? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look at you guys. Uh, you see the you and the them. That that picture of you. That's that's a picture of me when I was younger. Uh huh. I swear to no, it's not really a picture of me. So here's the idea. <laughs> You're sitting there struggling with the day to day events of of everything that's around you. You've got projects that you have to have done. There are things that are on fire, and everything's going wrong. And you have them. You have your 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 end users, your boss, all of these people that are that are. We need this now. We need this now. And in Microsoft environments, this has been a challenge. We've had some tools, and you've had some scripting languages, and we had VB script, but there were certain limitations that would challenge us, and it wasn't quite complete enough. It was also kind of hard, and doing automation and solving problems was a huge challenge. Then came along this product that you made. So why is it that, what is it that you were trying to solve for all of us guys in IT? Yeah, you know, when I came to the company, I, uh, I said, well, you know, we need an automation strategy. And they said, well, we have an automation strategy. I said, really, where? <laughs> yeah. And they said, well, you know, here, and it was VB script. It's like, uh, no, my friends, that's not an automation strategy. And they said, well, here, you know, we've got these great APIs. Like, no, my friend, that's not an automation oh, strategy. That, I don't even like the sound of that. <laughs> exactly. And so uh, what I knew was that we needed to have an interactive shell, an environment that someone would say, hey, go explore the system, try this, try that, try that, uh, be able to get things done. And then from there, the idea is like, hey, I, I notice I do type the things over and over and over again. Why don't I put it in a script and just run it from there? And then say, well, you know, that's great. Now it's, you know, reduce my repetitive strain injury. Uh, and I'd like to parameterize it. Oh, I'd like to parameterize it. Now I can uh, use it for a wider range of things. And now I'd like to share it with you. And now we'd like to use it to manage thousands of machines. So we had this model. We called it the develop or the admin development model, which really, you know, Bruce Payette, superstar right. Bruce, he says uh, the the average lifetime of a command line script or sorry, of a script. Um, starts at the prompt and ends at the, the carriage return. That it was very important that it be an interactive environment so that you can explore and honestly have fun. I mean, if there's two things you get out of today's session, one is the spirit of exploration. Hey, this is a great environment to go explore, explore, explore. And then, then two, just how much fun it is. I mean, it's just a blast to be able to, to use. And then from there, to be able to automate. You know, automate, automate, automate. 
you know, you know, if we had just transformed, you know, a click, click, click experience to a click, click, click experience, like, okay, that's good. Like, lots of people prefer this over, over this, uh, but you really wouldn't have transformed the platform. It's the ability to then do this, this, and this, and then say, save. Right. And then just say, click and run. And I, and I, I just want to emphasize that we're unaccustomed in Windows environments of having an interactive shell, a real-time solve your problem tool. I mean, we've always had basic commands, but that really wasn't solving our problem. Yeah. This means solve your problem and then literally copy paste or hit save and now you can automate it. Exactly. And <clears throat> it doesn't require any more than have fun finding and solving the problem and now I'm on my way. Yeah, you know, I mean, you might say, well, why do I need to do that? And the answer is because everybody's scenario is different. So we were talking in the car last night about how, well, hey, in, in exchange, you know, the GUI, you know, we, honestly, we spend a lot of time talking to customers and trying to understand the scenarios and put that into the GUIs so that you just click, click, click. But the reality is, and Jason was telling me the story about it, hey, I did that, but then what I needed to do was I needed to have different quotas for these types of users versus those types of users versus those types of users, and, uh, and, and the GUI didn't help me. You know, I had to go do a ton of clicking. So we might have gone and said, oh, well, okay, we'll add that to the GUI. But then all of a sudden, if you try and deal with everybody's scenarios in the GUI, it becomes big and it becomes complex and it becomes hideous, and then you can't use the GUI. And I, so, and, and, and I think that that's one of the uh, uh, biggest issues that people will, will start to see at first is that the graphical, there's nothing wrong with using a graphical interface. Nope, I mean, sometimes it. I use it too, I, and I, I use it for things that I just need to do once, one off, once every blue moon, you know, creating a site link in Active Directory. The graphical's great for that, but when you have business challenges that can't be met, such as, and I think what we were talking about last night was, I needed to set the mailbox limits of a particular OU in Active Directory. Uh -huh. Well, the graphical doesn't support that, and I don't expect Microsoft to solve that problem for me, because how are they supposed to know what my issues are? PowerShell is the way that you can solve those issues and that you can get these business problems solved. And it doesn't take six months. You get them solved right now and then you automate them. So the purpose to PowerShell really is all about making you more effective, getting stuff done faster, and solving problems that you probably had a hard time solving before. So let's Right, because often they're unique. Yeah, very unique. So let's see here. Installing PowerShell. Now, right now, there's, there's a lot of, it's kind of confusing for a lot of folks. First of all, let's talk about some of the versions of PowerShell. Yep. Nobody should have V1 right now, right? Okay. Can we, you can should we, upgrade up V2. You, you, you've got to be. At least, yeah. Okay, so V2 um, came out uh, a couple of years ago, right? Yep. A couple of years ago. And you should have V2 on Windows 7, and you should have it on 2008, 2008 R2. Um, and V2 also works and is, is part of the update stream that you can uh, uh, update for Windows XP, and shame on you if you still have Windows XP, and of course, Server 2003. Um, now, V3 is the new one, and V3 came out for Windows 8 and for Server 2012. If at all possible, as the administrator, you want V3 on your box, and you're going to see plenty of examples of that today, oh, yeah. of needing to have V3. You can upgrade V3 um, and have that on your box for both the uh, 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 Windows 7 and yep. Server 2008 R2, and that's it though, right? Uh, Windows Server 2008? Windows 2008, Server 2008 R2. And 2008 R2. got to make sure I get all, them all in there. So you can upgrade to V3. Now, you don't have to rush right out right now and start upgrading your servers to V3, and you should take some cautions out there. There are some products that aren't quite ready to handle V3, and there's yep. plenty of information on that, so don't be that guy or gal that makes that mistake and accidentally upgrade a server um, to V3 if the product running on it is not ready for it. But on your administrative machine, you got to have V3. You're going to love the features we show you today with it. Yeah, you should always read the release notes. You know, we tell you what, what it works with. And like, if you have this, don't install that. Yeah, release notes are really good, along with you know, testing is also really good um, as well. Um, if you take a look at the slide real quick, you'll see that there's a place where you can download. It's a strange name to download uh, PowerShell 3. It's called the Windows Management Framework. We're going to talk a lot more about what the, what the term, the Windows Management Framework, means. It's not just PowerShell. And there's a link there for you so that you can get it downloaded. Now, if today you have V2 on your laptop, you'll be fine. Yeah. But probably during lunch, you're going to want to use V3. And just to let you guys know, so that we can get the confusion out of the way, what we're doing today 
is how to use PowerShell. What we show you how to use today is going to work on V2, V3, and that mythical thing that's coming out sometime in the future, V4-ish like stuff. So you're going to be just fine with, with whatever version you have. That's we're going to be using. It's all going to be about the tool today. So. Well, let's talk about launching PowerShell. How do you find PowerShell to launch it? And guys, I'm actually going to demonstrate this off of my box real quick. Um, one of the most interesting things here is if you're on Windows 8, you have this magnificent Windows key that brings up your desktop for you. And to find PowerShell, it's actually very simple. Just start typing the word PowerShell. Now, I have to tell you, the first thing that I always do is right-click and pin <laughs> this to my taskbar. Right? I do too. I, <laughs> you'll have this, you're going to have PowerShell open more than anything else that you work with. So you want to make sure you right click and get this guy pinned. I've already got mine pinned down here on my desktop so that you can see it. Now, if you're working with um, a pre Windows 8 uh, uh, operating system, you're going to have to click on the start menu. And I've got a screenshot of what that looks like here in the slides. Um, You'll click on the start menu as soon as I can figure out how to bring the slide back up. And it's this guy over here. You're going to go under accessories and then Windows PowerShell will be at the bottom. And you're going to notice that there are two kinds of them out here. You're going to see some repeats, x86 versus ones that aren't x86. The x86 are obviously the 32-bit versions. You don't want to run those. You want to run the 64-bit version on your 64-bit OS. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about the ISE, but this is a great scripting editor uh, that we can use um, as well. So. As long as you got PowerShell ready to go, then we're ready to start to work with it. Rock and roll, baby. Now, let's talk a second about comfort. Comfort is important. Like these chairs yeah. right here in this studio are very, very comfortable, and that's very nice. We're going to spend a lot of time, <laughs> and I'm rocking back and forth because they're so comfortable. Swaying. He's swaying. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time looking at this console. Yep. And PowerShell uses... Does he use every possible character on the keyboard? No. Actually, there's the up arrow. The that we don't <laughs> Great. <clears throat> it's the up arrow that we don't <laughs> use. Oh, that's awesome. Well, guys, this is what I'm talking about. First of all, let me launch PowerShell and show this to you. Now, I'm going to launch it. I'm logged in as a regular user account. And I want you to notice when I launch PowerShell, the first thing, you take a look at the top of the screen here. See how it says Windows PowerShell? If you want to do some administration, that's not what you want it to say. So let me close this and show you. If you're in as a regular user account, you want to right click and do run as administrator. If you're an administrator, it'll already launch it with administrator. If not, it'll prompt you for credentials so that you can have administrative access. We're going to talk about security later, but this is actually an important thing. Notice as I'm looking at the console right now, this is something that we're going to be staring at for a long time. So there's a couple of things that you definitely want to be able to tell the difference in. By the way, it, one of the tricks here is if, um, if you're trying to do something and it's not working, like this morning, I was oh, trying yeah, to set yeah. some things up, <laughs> and uh, I did get VM, and it, there was, it showed me nothing. I was like, oh, do I, do I have the wrong machine? Did I provision this? I recently provisioned it. Did I like, forget to set things up? And then I looked, and I saw that I wasn't in admin mode. So then you bring it up in admin mode, and I say, get VM, and you see all your VMs. So if something's going a little wonky, go check and uh, uh, see that you are running as admin. And I, I just have to say that we're going to be doing several things today, and out of those things that we're doing today, if you're not in administrative mode, it isn't going to work. It's going to be very wonky. You're going to get error messages, access denied messages. And so you want to make sure you're in as administrator mode. Take a look at the uh, characters I have on the screen. Can you see the difference on your screen, what those characters are? Just, you zoom it. Well, no, I, I, oh. I, I want them to look at it and go, I can't oh. tell the difference. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want them to go, no, I don't know what it is. Don't you zoom it. Yeah, don't you zoom it then. Um, this is important. You need to make sure that this screen, you can see these individual characters. I, I've got a, a grave character or a backtick character and then a single quote, and there's only a couple of pixels in difference. So here's actually one of the most important things to do when you're getting ready to use PowerShell. I'm going to go in here to the properties, and we're going to adjust this console. Now, I'm not going to change mine, because that will screw all the views up, but let me kind of show you the idea here. Under fonts, you want to use a font that is nice and bold and thick, and they gave you one called Lucida Console. Did I, did I say that right? I don't Lucy know. Console? I, I have no idea. Consolas I would is say a, Lucida. Uh-huh. Never what? mind. Uh, that's okay. 
Consolas is a nice font, but it's thinner. I prefer the heavier weight font. And then you want to adjust the font size. But when you do that, to get it to a nice font size, you're going to notice in this preview pane that the pretty PowerShell window is going to extend to the right and mm. go to the bottom. And these are all bad things. And let me tell you why. When PowerShell is giving you information, it wants to sometimes put information all the way to the right and all the way at the bottom. And so if your screen has extended beyond the boundaries of your desktop, you're not going to see anything. So, <laughs> and you don't want scroll bars all over the place. Yeah. So let me show you how to fix that. Oh, you don't use bold? I always use bold. Do you use bold? Always. Really? Yeah. That scares me. Oh. Because it, it feels like it's yelling at me or something. Oh. Uh, okay. Well, what's it, you want to turn bold on? I always turn okay, bold on. Okay, we'll turn bold on. I find, well, here's the deal. When you present, if any of you ever present to the, the audience, always use bold because then it's just oh, easier to read can... like a couple hundred feet well, away. Well, it's screwing up my desktop. I don't want to turn it on now. No, so okay. <laughs> okay. Now in layout, guys, layout is where you're going to adjust your screen width and so that it fits. And then what you want to do is fit just like this in the preview window. Let me show you two things. The window size for width is right here, and that'll adjust its width. And I'll, I'll screw mine up for a second and see how it's kind of going off to the, the, the right over there. You don't want that. You want your width so that it fits, so you don't have a horizontal, I think that's this way, horizontal scroll bar. When you adjust the window width size, you also want to make sure that you keep the buffer size. You don't want things going off into the buffer where you'll never be able to see it. Height is an important one as well. I want you to notice as I scroll up and down this height, what I don't want to do is scroll that all the way below my desktop, because then when you see data, data will get put down at the very bottom and you won't see it. So I want it to fit on my desktop. A vertical scroll bar you'll have will be okay. Make sure that for the height buffer size, you get at least 3,000 3, or greater. And I want to warn you that when you're working with some products that have a PowerShell console, that console is set to 300 by default. So you definitely want to change that. You're going to lose information and not be able to scroll back and see it. When it comes to colors, oh, dude, I, I'm not changing the colors because I like the color scheme you picked out. I mean, oh, good. I mean, but, you know, if you want to change the colors to something that you like to read, uh, you know, you want to make it green screen or whatever or come up with some weird color combination, knock yourself out. But I'm going to leave it at the default color size. The important thing yeah, that is... Looks good. Yeah, I know. I thought the yellow would look great. The important thing is, is that your console is now ready to go, and it's all set up, and it's in a comfortable font. So while we move on, take a second and make sure that you've got a nice-looking PowerShell um, console to take a look at. So let's see what we're doing next here. I think we're ready to kind of get into some demonstration stuff. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is his. Looky, looky, looky. This is... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's old. And you get like this milk mustache going. I just like this is great. Get PowerShell. This is awesome. So let's talk a little bit um, and start off by taking some of the fear out of PowerShell. Before we talk about this, yep. this magic word commandlet, um, you needed to come up with your own commands, not the Windows native ones. You needed your own commands. Why the term commandlet? Yeah, so there's two answers to that. So first is that uh, PowerShell, um, we, we wanted to have a model of composition, okay? And so the model of composition, if you actually take a look at it, uh, the commands that you write are really, really, really small. And the idea is that then you, you leverage the engine to do common processing. So if you had each one of the commandlets um, try and do big tasks by themselves, I want to get things, and I want to process things, and I want to format them, then every developer would be doing things differently. Right. You know, oh, well, I like the term sort, and you like the term order, and order by, and all that. And so, so he said, no, no, no. You write the things that you and only you can use, do, and then leverage the engine to do everything else okay and so these commands got really really small and that was the whole point they're really really small and you use the pipeline to do bigger tasks and because of that you get or you get a, a, a regularity that is to say you're going to learn something and then you can use it over and over and over again so that's where the term commandlet came from but then when we went to bring it out the documentation people said no way, you can't do that. We don't make up terms. It's called command. <laughs> it's like, well, no, we're going to call it command. And they just went to the mat. It's like, no, 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 no. I said, I'll tell you what. Bring up a, a, a search window. Say, search for command. 
and there was like X hundred million things. I said, now search for commandlet, and it was X thousand. I said, every single one of those is related to PowerShell, and they're like, oh, search engine optimization. There you go, a little search. SEO on the exactly. <laughs> using the term commandlet, and I just have to say that my, my wife refers to them as Kimblets, because that's the way they're they're spelled, but at any rate, commandlets. Now, the, the, how a commandlet looks is also kind of bizarre if you've never been at the, the, the command line. I mean, if you've been at the command line, you see D-I-R, but now you're seeing these, well, we've got verbs, and we've got this dash, and we've got this noun. Why did you... Yeah, so a lot of people take way. a look at PowerShell and they say, oh, you know, very, it looks very much like Unix, right? And by the way, it's just, you know, we actually tried to, to use Unix, right? We didn't uh, start off wanting to invent something. We started off saying, i got to solve a customer problem. And so there were some really great tools out there, the Unix tools. So my first effort was to get those tools available on Windows. But it turned out that that didn't work. And the reason why is because Unix is very much of a document-oriented uh, operating system, which is a lot of the management is done through documents or files, whereas Windows is an API-oriented uh, operating system. Okay, Now, both have their advantages, but here's the thing. The management's completely different. So when I got Bash and Awk and Set and Grep available on Windows, okay, um, it didn't help that much. right? Why? Because then you go and you say Awk, uh, Awk doesn't work against the registry. Grep doesn't work against WMI. Sed doesn't work against uh, uh, Active Directory. And so in, in Unix, those, those tools, those text manipulation tools, are management tools. But on Windows, they're just text manipulation tools, and there's not much text, so they didn't help. Didn't help. So we yeah. had to invent our, our own stuff. And so then the question is, okay, well, we want to invent as little as possible. Uh, and so we leveraged a lot of the technology, or a lot of the, the concepts of Unix, the compositional model. But Unix, you know, love Unix, guys did a great job. On the other hand, it has weaknesses as well. And this is an area where we looked more to VMS, DCL, or the AS400. They have very good production-oriented environments, and they were extraordinarily regular in their environments, which is to say you had verb, dash, noun, and then this well-defined set of, of uh, uh, parameters. And what happened, the first time I learned it, right, I, I was a Unix guy for a long time, and then I had to do VMS. And I got on it, I was like, I hate this thing. I despise this thing. It's a piece of junk. And I would go around telling everyone this. And it's like, okay, but I got to do it for my job. And I'd try somewhere, and I just, I hate it. And, um, and at some point, I just had to, like, sit myself down and, like, Put your big boy pants on, Jeffrey. You, know, you got to learn this. And so it's like, okay, stop. Get out of your head condemning things. Just like experience it. And so about an hour later, I'm like, hey, you know, this thing's pretty cool. And then all of a sudden, two hours later, it's like something new comes up. And, and having learned a set of things, I said, boy, I wonder if that works. And it worked. So what happened was you learned the schema, right? Verb dash noun, or was slashes there. But then it was a schema. You learned it once, and then you were able to do it over and over and over again. And that was the joke at, at, at DEC. At DEC, we used to say, hey, somebody put a fish finder on the VAX. Can you manage it? And they're like, sure, show fish finder. Get fish finder <laughs> slash no log slash confirm. And I think that's really, I mean, that's the epitome of what's going to help us all out, not only today, but going forward, is the fact that you get used to um, I want to work with X. Well, I know that I've got these common verbs that I'm going to use. I'm going to be able to get this. I'm going to be able to set this, uh, you know, change it. I'm going to be able to new, create something new. And I think that's very important. And I started out in AS400s, and my, oh. my, my first, um, well, I was being trained. My first, there was a problem, and my first thing was, can't we just reboot it? And I thought the operator was going to punch me when I, I <laughs> he said should have. So, yeah, he should have. So, hey, guys, let me show you uh, what these commandlets are. Take a look at my current directory location. Now, if I was in something like DOS, you guys know that I could do CD backslash. But we have commandlets now. So watch. Set dash location. C colon backslash. Yeah, that's cool. Now, if I wanted to get something like a directory listing, in DOS, you guys know you can do DIR. But here's the interesting thing. We have commandlets for this. So get child item will give me a directory listing. If I want to clear the screen, if this was DOS, we'd do CLS, but we have a commandlet for that called clear dash host. Please tell me that you're not impressed yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we got the guys in the back there going, yeah, that was... Let's start to take the fear out of PowerShell. One of the, the things that helped me tremendously, especially when I got started with PowerShell, was that 
Yes, there are commandlets, and yes, we're going to show you how to discover and learn and use those commandlets, but you can start using PowerShell right now, even if you don't know those commandlets. Let me show you. This is kind of interesting. I'm going to close my shell and reopen it again. And so if I want to change from this directory location back to the root of C, CDB, oh, it, it worked. If I want to get a directory listing, it, DIR worked just perfect. If I want to clear the screen, CLS. See, it's working as I would expect. And here's the interesting thing. Uh, let's see, if I was a Unix guy, how would I get a directory listing? Um, LS. Um, how would I clear the screen? Well, clear. It's, 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 it's doing Unix stuff, and it's doing Windows stuff, and it's, it's making me happy because I can be a Windows guy, and I can sit down and start using PowerShell. A Unix guy can sit down and start being using PowerShell. My question is, is why is that working? Yeah, so what we do is we've got a regular uh, experience, right? So you've got uh, get child items, set location, et cetera. And you can always back use those things. And then what we did was we put personalities on it, which is to say we knew that Unix guys would be coming to this. We knew that DOS guys would be coming to this. And so we have aliases. And so uh, the aliases, uh, as much as possible, we wanted people's first experience to not be a frustrating one, that they try a set of things and they just work. PS continues continues to work? Exactly. And I think this is one of the interesting things is that they're aliases. And aliases, think of them as shortcuts to real commandlets, okay? So we're, we're not using the actual ls command or anything. It's pointing to a PowerShell commandlet, but the idea was, and I love your use of the term personalities, we built personalities into this, is that it makes it comfortable for whatever environment you're coming from so that you can get started right away. As a matter of fact, let me just kind of show you, get-alias gives you a list of the current aliases. By the way, you guys should print this out and memorize this in the next few minutes so it's, you have all the aliases. But this is what allows you to start working and you know things like making a directory. I can make a directory. Oh boy. See, I can go right to work right away. And this starts to bring us to another... Oh, we're, we're going to talk... If you're, if you're a Unix guy, you'd use... Make dir, right? Right? Give it so, a try. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Make dir. Hope this works. D Jeffrey. Woo, awesome. Woo, woo. See? It's <laughs> It's it's all that easy. Um, so basically your normal command line experience you can bring right to PowerShell, but wait, there's more. <laughs> okay? Yes, there's more. There's more. You're so, going to get a Ginsu knife out of this. Even better than a Ginsu knife. Now, first of all, I just want to kind of point out that we're going to talk about help extensively. But if you want to get help, you can type help. And if you're a Unix person and want to type help, you can type man. Now, personally, I think, you know, Unix is kind of sexist for the whole man thing. But in PowerShell, if you want to get a list of, <laughs> if you want to get a list of aliases, you can type get dash alias. But there's an alias for get alias called called gal. And see, this is what makes me so happy is that. PowerShell isn't sexist, so you should use this. Um, anyways, let me show you. <laughs> Stupid, but so here's where it gets really cool. You know what I can do from PowerShell? Besides working in an environment that already kind of feels comfortable with me, I can I can use Windows native commands. I love mm -hmm. this. Ping a computer, and it works. This ooh, is so ooh. awesome. Yeah, hoo hoo! I can run Notepad. I can, I can, I, oh yeah, I know everybody's impressed now. I can, oh look, calculator. And, oh, hey, you know what? I haven't tried this yet on Windows 8. I should try this. Can I run, do we still have MS Paint? Oh, this is awesome. So we still, <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the point was this, is that <laughs> you can still use your Windows native commands in here. You guys are always checking, you know, IP config and all that stuff. Don't, don't be that guy or that gal. I, 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 and I have to tell you, this is one of the funniest things I have. I was teaching an advanced scripting class for, for PowerShell, and this guy, uh, I've known him a long time, was writing this magnificent uh, uh, tool to go out and do a bunch of things to a couple of computers. Mm. And he's sitting there going, oh, my script's broke. Can you help me? And I'm like, well, what's your problem? And he says, well, the script's broke, and because it's, it's getting those two machines, but it's not getting anything from that machine. Mm. And I looked at him, I said, well, well, first of all, don't forget you're an engineer. What do, you, <laughs> what do you usually do if a machine's not responding? How do you test that? And he says, oh, oh, I'll ping it. And I'm like, yeah, see if it's even turned on. Very good, very good. So he's sitting at a PowerShell console. No. You know what he did? Yes. Start programs, accessories, opened up command prompt to type <laughs> ping. I literally looked at him and went, get out. Um, uh, 
<laughs> so the idea, guys, is you have your Windows native commands, and they work the way that you expect them to work so that you have an environment to get started in. So between alias is helping you out and between running Windows native commands, the idea is, is open up PowerShell. Don't open up the command prompt. Open up PowerShell and start mm -hmm. using PowerShell because you're going to start then learning the commandlets, and the, which we're going to do today. But you're going to start learning the commandlets and make your learning curve much easier this way. It was designed for you to do it this way. And so make your life easy and just go ahead and start using it. And make sure you show your other administrative friends. Open up the shell and start using it. It's going to work for you. So at least that's taking a little bit of the fear out of it. Let's hope. So, besides having aliases and all that kind of good stuff, folks, we want to do kind of a reminder for you. Oh, wait, can you go back? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can go back. Yeah, can I, can, can yeah, I show you something? Can, you, you can you go to my screen? Okay. <laughs> Hoo-ha, perfect. Let's see. Okay, so I don't know if you know this, but uh, so the aliases, right? So you saw aliases for gal, uh, PWD, PWD, right? Okay, so there are these personalities, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you take a look, there's just a ton of these things. Yeah. And so, so you notice, like, what are they alias to? It's all verb, noun, verb, noun. Or, sorry, yeah, okay. Uh, but the aliases are very regular as well. Okay, so take a look at this. Let's say gal, well, gal, G, star. Okay, notice wild cards. So notice all the Gs start with get. Okay. You, you know what? I, I don't think I've actually ever noticed that. Okay, now here's the thing. Now that's that's sort of obvious, right? But well, apparently not. But, I, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> but here's the interesting thing. Look at this one. G S V. Okay, let's let's see if I got the zoom at work in here. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so get service, G S V. So then the question is, well, geez, what about if I did gal star S V? And look there. Okay, so oh, you got some. So, G S V. Yeah. SASV, start service. SPSV, stop service. So look at this, SASV, okay? So, let's see. Ooh, I'm getting good at this. SASV <laughs> is start service. So, SV for service, let's say gal, SA star. And look, start, start, start. So it's not always the case, right? Sal, AL for alias, but yeah, SA, JB. So we've even uh, been uh, tried to be thoughtful and and uh, schematize the the um, the aliases as well. And you made them easy to search through. And this is going to become really important when we get to start talking about um, using the help system, which is what we're going to do next. But you've made them easy to search through to find aliases. And one of the things, guys, I want to show you as a as on to what Jeffrey was showing you is with those aliases. Um, a lot of times, get alias, a lot of times you're going to have a commandlet and you're going to want to know what the alias is for the commandlet. There is a way Ooh. to do this, and we're going to explain what parameters are. They alter the command, and there's a parameter called definition, and if I were to type in a particular commandlet, it'll tell me what the aliases are available for it. Notice in this case, there's a couple of them, PS and GPS for it. Um, so there's a couple of different ways to find and work with your aliases. I find it much easier if you just memorize the list. No, just kidding. Don't memorize the list. As a matter of fact, don't memorize anything. But we'll we'll talk about that more. Can you talk about that more? Good. Um, so because we don't want you memorizing stuff. No. That just takes the pain out of it. So questions or comments. Make sure that you're in the chat rooms. You're asking questions, and we're going to be checking on you guys as as we go throughout this to see if you have any questions and. There will be a recording of this later. I know a lot of people are asking if there's going to be a recording of this. Absolutely, and it will be available for you online with MBA. So, and I'm going to remind you with this slide often to, to ask questions and stuff like that. Thank you.